Hi everyone, and welcome back to Tea Cozy Gaming. I am April, and we are playing Beacon Pines. Now, the last time we played, we got our buddy Rolo back, which was great, but then kind of end of the world, ice age, apocalypse kind of happened, which was sort of depressing and awful. Um, but hey, we're ha hanging out with Beck now, and we're going to meet up with Rolo, and this time things are going to be great. I can feel it. I know last episode at the beginning of that one, I was like, good things are going to happen, and then we froze to death. Uh, but I, things are going to, no, no, it's going to be better this time. I can feel it. It's going to be, it's going to be great. It's about time. I was about to give up and go home. Who's the new kid? Name's Beck. You must be Rolo. I see my reputation precedes me. Welcome to Mission Control. Rolo waggled his head with pride. You'll find we've spared no expense in construction. I've seen worse looking piles of junk. Thanks. Hey, Luca, you know the security concerns we talked about? Yeah. While I was waiting, I made some... improvements. Let me lock this baby down for a little test infiltration. Can't be too safe these days. <laughs> what are you up to, Rolo? <laughs> He goes all out, doesn't he? Always. Oh my goodness, what is this? Rolo, bud. What are you doing? Oh, I gotta hit the target. Oh no. Oh. I'm usually bad at stuff like that. I was expecting that to be harder. But now that I've said it's easy, I'm gonna suck. Nope. Yeah, bring. Yeah, I can do this. I'll do this all day. <laughs> Yay, we did it. Where did you guys get all this junk in the first place? There's a guy in town named Jeff who trades us junk for snacks. Junk food for junk. Nice. So, pretty sweet security, right? It was imaginative, I'll give you that. Luca, are we sure we can trust the new recruit? I'll vouch for her. Thanks, I guess? Oh, Luca, you promised to fill me in about the Valentine warehouse. Um... Luca sucked in a long breath. So, like I said, there was someone there. What were they doing? I don't know, but the place was lit up and active. Maybe they were squatters? I don't think so. It seemed more organized. When the man pulled me in, I saw some sort of equipment running. A man pulled you in? Yeah, but I got away. You keep saying it was a man. They were wearing a mask, right? Yeah. Then it could have been a woman. How did you get away? I grabbed a rock or something and broke their mask. They let go and I ran. Dang. That's intense. No wonder you freaked out when you saw your grandma. Yeah, that's the other part. On our way here, Beck and I saw Eris Valentine meeting with Gran wearing the same sort of hazmat suit. Rolo let out a low whistle. And they weren't there for idle chit-chat. It was a proper clandestine meetup. So let me get this straight. There's an operation in full swing at the Valentine Warehouse. You were almost abducted by a strange man or woman in a protective suit. And then you saw your gran in the same suit talking to Eris Valentine? 
pretty much. I'm beginning to think this town is kind of awesome. Rollo and Luca shot back a look. No offense. And so we can logically conclude aliens or alien zombies have infiltrated the town. What if he is right? He's been saying aliens this whole time. What if it is aliens? What if Kerr is an alien? And this is just, he's just starting with Beacon Pines, takes over Beacon Pines today, the rest of the world tomorrow. What if that's what's going on? That'd be crazy. And their leader is your gran, and she tried to murder you. First of all, and for the last time, there are no aliens. Second, it couldn't have been my gran at the warehouse. I broke that person's mask to get away. The mask gran was wearing wasn't damaged. But she's definitely hiding something. Maybe. Your gran is weird, but she might be the most boring person in the universe. All she does is sit around all day making jam. What could she possibly have to hide? I don't know. We haven't talked much since she moved in. Moved in? Your gran isn't from here? No, she came here a few months back to take care of me after... After his mom went missing. Did you know your gran before? Not really, no. It'd been years since I'd seen her. Luca, don't take this the wrong way. But are we sure your gran is on the up and up? Luca gazed out the window. I'm just saying. It sounds like strange stuff has been happening since she showed up. We could say the same thing about your family. But you're right. Luca, your gran is hiding something. And Pa always says, folks only bury stuff worth digging up. We need to investigate your house. If my gran really is hiding something, don't you think I would have noticed by now? That's kind of the whole point of hiding something. I guess you're right. Gran's been leaving the house for hours at a time this week. I'll call you two tomorrow when the coast is clear. And we can start getting to the bottom of this. I'm always game for a good I'm always game for a good snoop. You can count me in. Oh boy. Chapter six. Secret Lair. Ooh. Summer forged ahead, but the nights only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. What time is it? I wish I had a different sweater. I mean, this sweater is cute, but I've been wearing it the whole game. I wish I could change. I've been playing way too much Animal Crossing. Play Animal Crossing, I buy a new outfit every day. Rolo, what on earth is that? Hmm? <laughs> that ridiculous thing on your head. Oh, this? It helps me think. You're gonna need a lot more of those. <laughs> Joke all you want. We'll see who's laughing when I crack this case wide open. The coast is clear? Yep. Whatever she's been up to this week, it's been keeping her busy most of the day. Very well. The game is afoot. Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rollo <laughs> strutted across the room. <laughs> He's so cute. If I were Gran, where would I hide my deepest, darkest secrets? Perhaps where you might least expect it. Rolo flung open the cabinet with confidence. He Aha! He coughed as a veil <laughs> of dust hit his face. I think it's safe to assume anything that dusty isn't what we're looking for. Or maybe that's what she wants you to think. Then again, 
Any good detective knows not to trust their first hunch. First hunches are for suckers. Eureka! She has lit a fire in order to burn the evidence. <laughs> she keeps that fire going every day, Rolo. Drat. It may already be too late. I just... Just think of the mounds of documents lost to ash. Okay. I'm gonna stop you right there. Can we just think for a moment? Luca, is there anywhere Grand doesn't want you to go? Yeah. The closet upstairs. So maybe it stands to reason that we should check there first. No dice. It's locked. Well, well, well. Look who stands to reason now. <laughs> and I have no idea where the key is. If it really is important, then she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? She has her berry bushes. Who has ever thought, I'm going to take this important thing and huck it in a bush. True. Anything else? Maybe something out of the ordinary. Well, she is always worried I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen. But it doesn't matter anyway. I can't reach the latch. A look of realization crept onto Luca's face. Hmm. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. <laughs> Are we going to pile up on top of each other? All right, Rolo. This is your time to shine. Ah, yes. You've called upon my expert detective skills. And now I shall proceed with- Before he could finish, Lucas scrambled up Rolo's back. <laughs> hey, this isn't my idea of detective work. Every squad needs a good lockpick. And every good lockpick needs a sturdy head to sit on. This is beneath my standing. Stop complaining and hold still. Got it. The three crowded around the hutch to peer in. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss. But the only distinct feature was its impeccability. Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah. I don't really know what we were expecting. Like, oh hey. Let me just yank on this random teacup and pulled on one of the teacups. It slanted forward with a hollow click. <sighs> the entire Super hutch dark. began to rustle and slide under its own power. <sighs> Seems like your gran has been doing some remodeling. Dude, only two types of people have secret lairs. Evil masterminds and superheroes. So, which one do we think she is? We're about to find out. Okay, so more of an unhinged conspiracist vibe? Oh, wow. Yeah, this cannot be good. We need to look around before jumping to conclusions. Hmm. What are these photos? Oh no. A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town, interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. Well, she sure has kept herself busy. Uh, is your gran a serial killer? <laughs> Cause I'm starting to get a vibe. Don't be ridiculous. Sure, she's just tracking the movements of everyone in town out of the kindness of her heart. She put little symbols by some of them. Yeah, Mr. Nuncreed has a check mark. The clipboards are all inside a big circle. My moms are both on here. Both both with question both with question marks. Gus Valentine has a question mark. Eris has a question mark that's been crossed out. Uh, Mr. Kerr has a bullseye. 
The killer has chosen her next victim. We don't know what any of this means. Whatever it means, it's probably not good. Probably not. Luca jostled each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. He fingered through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. For a long moment, he just stared at it. Is that his dad? Maybe? What do you got there? It's my dad. Looks like some of his old medical files. Your dad was a doctor? Luca nodded and caressed the label with his thumb. Well, are you gonna read it? I... Here, let me help. Carlo swiped the folder from the drawer and began leafing through the pages. He whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. How about you actually read some of it? One sec. Dense documents such as this are a lot like a cheeseburger. It's best to skip straight to the middle. <laughs> That's where all the meaty bits live. Wow, I had no idea we were in the presence of the preeminent scholar in dense documents. And cheeseburgers. By all means, proceed. He stopped at a page and mimed holding up a monocle. <laughs> Ah, here we are. Follow up examination of Terence Wilby. Patient shows further signs of paleness and malaise. Body temperature continues to drop. He now describes soreness of muscles and joints. This is similar to the symptoms exhibited by Mrs. Wilby just a few days past. Still waiting on lab results from Joseph. Rolla looked up with heightened surprise. See? Creepy. Yeah, that's kind of disturbing. Who's Joseph? That's Mr. Nuncreed's name. Wait. Rolla's finger traced across the page. There's more scribbled in the, mar in the margins. Could it be contagious? Mr. Wilby claims to tap w claims the tap water at his home has been contaminated. Perhaps environmental? Lab results only raise more questions. It's like he came back to these reports later and made those notes. So it might be related to something else. Rollo scanned through several more pages. Here, the writing looks shaky. I just couldn't help her. This disease, or whatever it is, progresses so fast. And with his wife passing, Terence's conditions follow close behind. Exacerbated by the loss. Enough is enough. I need to take matters into my own hands. Luca, staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. What does it say next? Rolla rustled the folder, trying to loose more pages. That's where it ends. What? There has to be more. Luca frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Luca, I think that's the only one. It's alphabetical, see? What did he mean, enough is enough? How did he take matters into his own hands? This is bullshit. Luca slammed the drawer shut. Hmm. What do we have here? Barrels marked caution explosive. And jam jars? That's enough jam to feed the whole town. What kind of incendiary jam is your grand making? <laughs> she wouldn't have had me walk around town delivering bombs. Right? Only one way to find out. Rollo casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. Oh gosh. Huckleberries. He smacked his lips. Duh. A hint of brown sugar. 
and ink. What? Rollo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Aha. Rollo offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. <laughs> it's addressed to Mrs. Fratelli. A grand jam gram? <laughs> it says, Last night I used the disguise Eris provided to scout the location. A timing window should be possible. Operation Spark Plug is a go. Oh man. Are they doing a heist? Whatever it is, it can't be good. So, more a bombshell than a bomb, am I right? You're new here, so I'll let it slide. But I'm the bad joke guy around here. <laughs> around a worn down old map of Beacon Pines. Cool. This looks like a treasure map. Not every old map is a treasure map, Rolo. Yeah, but every treasure map is an old map. Can't fault that logic. Look, there's even a pathway drawn on it. It starts at the entrance to town. And we follow it. Carefully trace the path with his finger. It leads right to... He jabbed down at the end point. Town Square? That's the fountain in the middle of town. What a weird place to hide treasure. Um... Rolo, that doesn't look like treasure to me. The end of the path on that map has the same symbol as those explosives over there. Oh, jeez. So it's not hiding treasure? A real bummer. Rollo, what's the thing you've been excited about for the past month? A festival. Gulp. Did you just say gulp? This feels like a gulp kind of situation. <laughs> Everyone will be gathered near the center of town. She's gonna blow up the festival! Not if we stop her. Oh my gosh. Uh, what was that? Luca looked up from the map. What was what? No, I heard it too. That was the front door. Which means someone just shut the door. Which means someone's upstairs. Shh, quiet. Hit the lights. Beck flicked off the light and they became statues in the dark. Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. The kids looked up, the tilt of their necks following each footfall. Duh. Don't like this. Then suddenly, it stopped. Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. Oh, it's one of the clipboard guys. Hello. A final few footsteps reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down the stairs. Anyone down there? Or no, the it's three um. Kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. What's his name? The glasses. As he began to descend the stairs, the man's voice punctuated every new step. Thump. Yoo hoo! Thump. I'm not here to hurt anyone. Thump. I'm just here to help. Thump. That is so scary. <laughs> Thump. Thump. Why is that so intense? He's not here to hurt us. Just... At the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. Huh. Guess it's nothing. Rolo shifted suddenly. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. Rolo, don't. It was too late. 
Rolo was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. <laughs> Flaming chicken coop! With all his weight, Rolo tackled the man oh to the ground. Oh my god. Rolo? Mysterious creepy man? Anyone there? From the dark corner, they saw something move. Well, I didn't know if I had it in me. But there was only one way to find out. Holy crap, Rolo, that was awesome! Wait, did you just kill that person? Luca scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground. Pressing his fingers to the man's neck, he sighed with relief. You sure clobbered him good, Rolo. He's knocked out cold. As Beck flicked back on the light, Luca and Rolo both gasped in stereo. Mr. Tolliver, that's his name. Mr. Tolliver. Chapter 7 <laughs> The Interrogation of Hiram Tolliver. See, Hiram. I don't know. He doesn't give off any this is a bad guy vibes. So I think he might be okay. I think he may, may be okay. Still unconscious, Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. His hands were bound with rope, his feet tied with some loose string. The kids huddled in a circle, discussing their plan. One thing was certain, they couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. They needed to know what he was doing in Luca's house. After some deliberation, it was decided. <laughs> They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop, hard cop. I mean, it's good cop, bad cop, so hard cop. They'd run the classic good cop, hard cop interrogation. <laughs> Rollo brandished a steely gaze. <laughs> I've got this. Read about it a hundred times. <laughs> Rollo swaggered past the chair which propped up the slumping Hiram Tolliver. Without even looking at his captive, he began with a long, blustery drawl. Well, 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 Mr. Tolliver. Mr. Tolliver remained motionless. He's knocked out. Rollo spun around to face him. He'd clearly expected to rouse Mr. Tolliver with his booming voice. Mr. Tolliver? Beck and Luca gave each other an unsure glance. Rollo slammed his fist on the table. I said, Mr. Tolliver! He grabbed the table lamp and beamed it onto the unconscious face. Mr. Oh. Tolliver groaned and slowly lifted his head. He recoiled with a muddled, weary squint. What in the world? The chair wobbled as he attempted to straighten up. Who... Who's there? Mr. Tolliver could only make out rough shapes through the glaring light. With a gruff tone, Rollo hoped to both conceal his voice and intimidate. I'll be asking the questions here, punk. Now, hold on, let's just calm down. Oh, I am calm. Calm as a carrot in dirt. As for you, looks like you're sweating. The doubtful expression on Beck and Lucas' faces transformed into awe. <laughs> we can do this my way, or, well, let's just say I've never needed another way. Rollo, hitting his stride, was now channeling every detective trope his memory could recall. <laughs> he slammed the table again. Now dance! <laughs> what? I, I don't even- Mr. Tolliver's voice became desperate. He was nearly in tears. Oh. You've tied me down. How on earth can I dance? Dance with your mouth, punk. Spill the beans. What are you doing poking around this house? I, 
I'm here to help Juniper. To make sure everything's ready. Oh, so you're in cahoots with Gran? Gran? Mr. Tulliver was in a daze. Now more confused than ever. Gonna help her blow up the festival, eh? Blow up the festival? Good lord. He shook his head, feeling more and more dizzy. No, no, you've got it all wrong. Where is she now? She's headed to the source. Source? What's the source? It's where... His voice faded to a whisper. The town began. Where it all began. What is Operation Sparkplug? With that, Mr. Tolliver passed out cold. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> poor guy. Spun around with a repentant grimace. Damn, Rolo. I think you were a little too hard on him. What did he say about the source? It's where the town began? We need more information. Yeah, but we'd, but we'd better not push Mr. Tolliver any further. Is there anyone else who might know more? What about the History Museum? It just got set up for the festival. Nah, that tent was put up by the Valentines. Everything they do is just a bunch of fluff to glorify themselves. Is there anything more reliable? The library. If there's information about this source thing, Kato can help us find it. Let's go get some answers. Hey, Kato! He's so cute. Little penguin. This is a dang nice library. Thanks, we work hard on it. Aren't you a little young to be a librarian? Oh, uh... Kato hung out here so much, eventually they gave him a set of keys. I just keep an eye on the place for Miss Novak sometimes. They got you working for free? It's quiet, and I get access to all the books I can read. What more could a person want? Fair enough. What can I do for you all? We need a favor. I already told you, Anne Rolo. I, can, I can't put you any higher on the wait list for the next Hank Atomic. And if you're here with more candy, I'll have you know I can't be bought. Call it a personal code of conscience. Conscience. Actually, we're looking to do some research. Now you're speaking my language. What are you looking for? That's the thing. We sort of don't know. What do you got on the history of the town? Hmm. There's the county record archives. What's in those? Births, deaths, newspaper clippings, stuff like that. Pretty boring reading. But they do go all the way back to when the town was founded. Great, we'll start there. Chapter 8 Six feet under, three towns over. The kids spent the rest of the afternoon combing through dusty piles of old county records, desperately searching for anything that could help them make sense of Mr. Tolliver's cryptic utterance. Luca tried to shake the thought of Grand's basement, but his focus wavered. Explosives, messages hidden in jam, dossiers on various town figures, and a corkboard threaded with photos. Gran was the only family he had left. He still couldn't bring himself to believe the worst. But the old map with the symbol of explosives in Town Square made that difficult. As the sun began to set, the kids were no closer to the truth. If I have to read any more records, my eyeballs are going to pop. We have to keep digging. If I dig another word, I'm going to end up in one of these asinine death records. Rolo Cotter lived a full and wonderful life, till he read so much boring crud that his brain oozed out of his ears. Rolo shut his book with an assertive nod. 
If you've got a better idea, spit it out. You sound like my sister. Keep pushing your luck, pal. And it won't be boring county records that kill you. I'll put you in the obituaries myself. Rollo muttered under his breath. <laughs> You're a county record. Really? That's the best you've got? When I'm done with you, you'll be the footnote in history. Just Beth like... Beth slammed her finger down on the open page before glancing down to read. Jay Hartford here. I'd love to see you try. Hey, hey, hey. We're all a little tired here. Let's just take a minute and... Something tickled the back of Luca's mind. Wait, what was that name, Beck? In the obit? J. Hartford. From the Book Brookville Tribune eight years ago. That can't be right. What is it? J. Hartford. That's my grand's name. Juniper Hartford. Maybe there are two J. Hartfords? Mrs. Hartford is survived by her young daughter, E. Hartford. My mom's name is Eleanor. Okay, this is getting creepy. If your grand is six feet under, three towns over, then who am I living with? The question hung in the air. Oh. All right, gang, I'm gonna close up for the night. Beck rubbed her eyes. How late is it? Almost 10. Oh crap, Pa is gonna kill me. I gotta go. Yeah, my parents will be worried sick. Okay, let's meet up as early as we can at the festival tomorrow. What are you gonna do about the unconscious man in your basement? I'll think of something. Luca's heart was pounding as he approached the house. Ugh. If he was lucky, Gran or whoever it was whoever it hadn't was. gotten back yet. And, of course, there was Mr. Tolliver tied up and unconscious in the basement. Dealing with him would be the first order of business. Luca shook out his arms to calm his nerves before entering. <gasps> he held perfectly still, tempering his breath and to listen closely. She was asleep. His only hope was that she hadn't found Mr. Tolliver before dozing off. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay, okay. I think I'm gonna end it here today. Just before we get into any more interrogations or um, a possible like interaction with, with Gran or whoever she is, because it might not be his grandmother at all, and his mother's missing. So who is this woman? Or is his grandmother just not dead? I don't know. So many questions, and Mr. Tolliver's just tied up unconscious in the basement with explosives. This is just, just the plot thickens. Wow. Okay, so yeah, there's a lot going on. But uh, we're gonna get to the bottom of all of this and we will continue it next time. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up, let me know. And uh, if you would like to see more, please do subscribe. I will have more videos in the near future. And I will see you all later. Bye.